And good morning. Welcome to Community Voice. I am your host, Josh Engel. Today is Wednesday, July 3rd. Hope everyone is getting uh, excited, worked up for the festivities tomorrow. Be sure to check out the uh, uh, the uh, People's Parade and the Sounds of Liberty concert that's going to be happening over at uh, the Carrollton City Schools. Um, we're very, very proud to have um, some guests in the studio with us today representing the uh, THS Homeless Resource Bridge, officially called THS Emergency Shelter, Inc., and uh, we have uh, Laddie Carter, who is the former CEO of the organization, and Denise Swanson, who is the current CEO of the organization. Good morning, ladies. Hi. Good morning. All right. Well, thank you guys for uh, waking up bright and early and joining us on the program. Uh, I did want to let everyone know at home, just a reminder, we are live streaming uh, not only on our uh, WLBB News Talk 1330 app, but we're also uh, live streaming video, uh, courtesy of our videographer, Joel, uh, on our WLBB News Talk 1330 Facebook page. So if you have any questions or comments or uh, you would like to offer some advice or assistance to our lovely guests today, feel free to throw that in the chat and I'd be happy to read those out to them. Um, so why don't we first start uh, with some background. If you could, uh, let's start with Laddie, uh, Miss Laddie Carter. If you could tell us a bit about yourself. Okay, I am a longtime, full-time Carrolltonian. Been here all my life and that's more than eight years than you want to know. Um, <laughs> I am a third generation owner of uh, the Groover Smith Furniture Store that was on the square. Uh, we closed in 2005. Uh, we were there for 75 years. So I'm very familiar with Carrollton and very dear to my heart. Excellent. Excellent. Well, uh, let's throw it over to uh, Denise Swanson. Denise, good morning. Tell us a bit about you. Hi, I'm Denise Swanson and I've been back in Carrollton for about four years. And when I came back, the biggest thing I wanted to do was to find a place to volunteer. And I did volunteer with THS. That was the one that picked me, I guess, out of the other two that never recalled. But I am a mother of two children, a wife, and I've had a business 15 years ago. And it was in a rental business. And I sold it so we could have our kids and stay at home with my family. Cool. Love to volunteer. Excellent. So some real Carrolltonians right here. Yes. Um, well, uh, that might speak a bit to your investing back into the local community here, you know, trying to help people out. Absolutely. Um, who would like to tell us a bit about the organization? I imagine that uh, Miss Laddie might be able to pro provide some of the history, you know, tell us about how it came together. Yes, thrilled. Uh, we were founded in 2014 by North Point uh, Baptist Church over on what was uh, West Carrollton Baptist Church. <clears throat> excuse me, on Maple Street. Uh, they had an empty building, some ladies. It had turned very, very cold. Some ladies in a Sunday school class said, we've got that empty building over there on Maple Street. Let's see if we can't at least get these homeless people into some warm uh, climate. So um, I met them over there on Sunday afternoon. They said, it's going to be a while. We've got to clean up the building. Well, they went in on Monday morning. It was spotless. We opened on Tuesday whoa it was a god has just opened doors for ths ever since its founding absolutely now can we speak a bit to the um to the nature of the issue you know like when we bring uh, different organizations on you know keep care beautiful they they speak on the local environment you know how things are maybe giving us an idea of just how big the problem is so in terms of um in terms of those who are displaced who don't have a home can we speak a bit about to that issue? Like, as I think there are a lot of misconceptions, like, you know, what has led, uh, you know, what kind of, um, what kind of numbers are we looking at in terms of uh, people that are at any given point homeless in this, uh, in this local area? And do we know kind of the causes? Like wh what happens? Is it, uh, you know, is it often addiction or is it, uh, is it people losing their work, people losing spouses? Can we speak a bit to that? A lot of it has to do, I mean, there's many different reasons. You've got your young kids, that want to leave mom and dad and then they don't have a job so they just want to leave home some of them are bad situations at home then we have others we have single women that they get divorced they've never worked now they're homeless with children uh, men the same way hmm. uh, drug dependent mental illness is the two biggest ones that most people know uh, right now our biggest one the biggest growing is our seniors hmm. you think of your seniors that get the social security check the people that they've been renting for them, the rent goes up, they now cannot afford it. So they're living in their cars or they're 
going into hotels, that's one thing that THS, the biggest resource that we have is we put people in hotels trying to get them off the streets. I think that's actually a good, uh, a good segue point there. Let's talk about how the organization serves uh, displaced individuals, individuals with no homes. Um, you know, you mentioned the, uh, 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 you know, working out, uh, being able to have a hotel for them to stay at. Uh, could you speak a bit about the process? So let's say that, you know, I, I come, uh, let's say that I have, uh, I've lost my home and, and I'm, I got nowhere to go and I were to come to, uh, to the organization. Um, wh- what would happen from there? So we generally work by text or phone calls and, that's how we get in contact. When they contact us, we send them out a questionnaire. They send us that back with their IDs of all the adults. And then we sort of talk to them about where they're at and try to just facilitate what's the best plan of action. Do they need a job? Is that the first thing? Or can we work together with them on getting into a hotel room? Yeah, Or, you know, if, if you guys determine that there might be some mental health issues, uh, maybe make a call, you know, I mean, I imagine you guys are able to connect. So we, uh, with, with jobs, we work a lot with Goodwill. We work with Bob Jackson at Coalition Reentry. Re-entry we work with Pathways. Oh, uh, the Reentry Coalition. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I always say that wrong. Sorry. <laughs> I think it's cool. I think it sounds cooler, honestly. But, but uh, we work with Pathways for mental health. We work with Drug Court. We work with Tanner Willowbrook anybody else i'm missing yeah we are big to collaborate with others in the community that is our main thing now with the connector which is uh sponsored by the community foundation uh we have a little bit of a different process we send them a uh link to community uh, to the connector and then they dole out what the request is what an uh, amazing to, project that is right? it is it, 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 it's it's going to be really great it's like it's going to make every every uh, if a person is in need it's like all their needs are visible to all mm-hmm. the resources that are that are needed yeah. that's so cool it's been hard getting it kicked off but i'm i'm coming around with it <laughs> yeah well change is painful it takes yes, time to kind of is. but, but it once is. it's streamlined I, I can't imagine how many yeah. people will be served uh, so, f- for up to this point, where has the organization been housed? We are uh, currently on Hayes Mill Road, part of the West Georgia United Methodist Church campus, which mm-hmm. is now com- uh, First Community United Methodist. Um, we are there. We've been there eight years. Uh, awesome. We first uh, went there for three months, and uh, they have graciously let us stay for eight years. We paid. Uh, a minimal of rent uh, we've helped with some uh, roof repair and uh, floor repair but they have given back to us so much more but they need the space and we totally understand that absolutely sure mm-hmm. I mean eight years is a good run I mean that's it, it is that's very generous of them to, to house the organization for that long they have been so great. that's going to be something that we're going to be talking about today I believe is a, a need for a new space Correct. A new space for the organization. Yeah, um, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I think this is a, as good a time as any to go ahead and take our first break. But when we come back, uh, we will continue our conversation with the CEO of a THS Homeless Resource Bridge, Denise Swanson, as well as former CEO, but still very much the boss lady. You know, I trust her. Anything she says, I trust her. Uh, Laddie Carter, uh, as we chat, chat more about the organization and about some current needs that uh, members in the community might be able to to assist them with. Uh, Time is 8.39. Yeah, we'll go and take our uh, break now. Community Voice brought to you by Tanner Health System and Oak Mountain Academy. Health is a journey. It's making better choices, even when it's not easy. It's taking care of yourself and the people you love. At Tanner Health System, we're there for you with every step, with primary care, heart care, cancer care, women's care, orthopedics, surgical services, and so much more. We're dedicated to helping you live and feel your best. So let's get on that journey to health. You've got places to be for many years to come. Find us at Tanner.org. The World Language Scholar Journey at Oak Mountain Academy is designed to provide students with a clearly defined curriculum-based track to acquire essential knowledge and skills for success in biliteracy fields of study. The successful completion of this journey provides colleges with a method to recognize a rigorous foreign language immersion experience for all students at Oak Mountain Academy. I'm Patrick Uran, head of school, inviting you to journey with us on the mountain. For more information, visit us at oakmountain.us. Discover your journey at OMA. Prepare, explore, and achieve.
And we're back to Community Voice. Time is 8.40. I'm your host, Josh Engel. Today is Wednesday, July 3rd, and, uh, and uh, we are continuing our conversation right now with the CEO of THS Homeless Resource Bridge, uh, officially titled uh, THS Emergency Shelter, Inc. THS stands for the Holy Spirit. Um, Denise Swanson, as well as former CEO of the organization, uh, Laddie Carter. Uh, if you're just tuning in, be sure to check out the uh, podcast of this episode or the live stream of this episode, which is on our uh, WLBB News Talk 1330 Facebook page. Please share it. Uh, this is a great organization that is wanting to help as many people as possible and has and have been now for many, many years. Um, if you think that you can help them or if you may know people in your circle that can help them, share this episode so that we can spread the word, spread that good word. Um, all right, well, let's jump back into it. So. Denise, if you could, for folks who may just be tuning in, uh, give folks a quick elevator pitch on what THS Homeless Resource Bridge is all about. Serving people that are in need. That's the biggest thing, Amen. no matter what they need. Most of ours are hotels, but some of them are medical. It just depends on what they need and when they need it. Sure. So, okay. I mean, so it varies. Like, mm -hmm. it's not just about acquiring uh, space for people. If someone is in need of medical attention um, or if they're, you know, hungry or something mm -hmm. i imagine you'd be able to help yes. them with that yes we do we do some food services and we do de delivery to the hotel for people that don't have cars so they're not having to pay 20 to 25 dollars to go to one of these food banks and i think that it's important we touch on uh, something you said earlier i think this is so interesting it's not people have may have a misconception that individuals that are, are homeless or in need that may be that they're oh they're drug addicts or oh they're just crazy they got mental health issues uh, which we should be, you know, show grace and assist with. I think that's mm -hmm. our calling. But furthermore, that's not always the case. Sometimes these are women who have left uh, domestic abuse mm -hmm. situations, men who have left domestic abuse situations, or as you mentioned earlier, elderly, members of the elderly community who are on a fixed income and with rising uh, rent prices. You know, sometimes all of a sudden you're homeless. Yeah. You know, it's the seniors, scary. seniors are the biggest growing sector of homelessness they say it will triple in the next five and a half years and that's nationwide not and last and wow. last year here in Carrollton, we had 65 that we served that were considered seniors 65 seniors that were homeless living in their cars help. living in a park how can someone do that to somebody like if you were a land you know if you were a landlord I mean, how could you do that? How could you bring yourself to say, hey, you know, I understand you don't have that extra $220 a month. Get out. Go live in your car. How well, do people do that? It's not 220 though. Rent has doubled some in some places for these people. Where they were paying five to $600, you can't find even a room in somebody's house for, you know, that now. No, I'm, I'm leasing out my toolbox. Someone, <laughs> you, someone can live in my toolbox for that nowadays. I mean, that's what exactly. it feels like. It, that's exactly it. The senior, and that's... They, most disability people only make nine hundred and forty dollars. So your disabled people, and is another bigger second too. So, so the individuals that honestly need the most care and support, these are the people that you guys are helping all the time. Yes. Now, how do you do? You have relationships with uh, the the local hotels to to work out these. Uh, I mean, you know, Miss Laddie said earlier, collaborations the name of the game. So I mean, uh, are these pretty long standing relationships? Oh yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, we have several hotels that we get a discounted rate for, um, and of course we're five hundred one c three, so that helps on on the fees. But mm -hmm. yes, we do, and we appreciate them all. Some of them will even donate back to us. Wow, mm -hmm. on top of everything else. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, shout out to those uh, local hotel uh, hoteliers. I don't know if that's the word that uh, that uh, help these individuals that have been displaced that are homeless. So. Uh, as we were talking about right before the first break, uh, you have um, uh, had a home, had a home base now for about eight years, and uh, that chapter is coming to a close. So what are we looking for? I believe that uh, a new space is in order. If you guys could tell us what, tell us what you're looking for, and uh, maybe some of our fine listeners can either assist or maybe they know someone who can. We're looking for something about 1,500 square feet. We would love to have a shower. Because so, some of the people don't have a shower. This new community shelter that's open is open from 10 to 2. And we have people that come in earlier before work even to go to sh take a shower or either come in after work and take a shower. So those are really important f for us. Uh, 
needs to have like four or five different office type spaces because we do have people that are calling and checking up on the application during the day and trying to get that one-on-one feel for exactly what their all their needs are, not just that emergency shelter need. Sure, absolutely. So this uh, would this also be a, a place where the the staff of THS uh, Homeless Resource Bridge, where they would be, so they would be op- operating out of there as well. Yeah, we're an all volunteer agency. So yeah, we have about twenty volunteers that come in sometime during the week. Sure, uh, we are open on Tuesdays and Wednesdays to do assessments. So yeah, that's why I mean when I say for them to come in. A lot of our people don't come in. It's all done generally by text or phone calls. Sure. Just like people working from home. Because they'll be at the hotels, you know, and, mm-hmm. and you might be working on them trying to help uh, get a job or something right. like this. So this would be the home base. This is where uh, if folks need be, they uh, if they can't take a shower over here, they can come take a shower at this office mm-hmm. uh, and as they work on bettering their, their situation. Correct. True. Um, like Denise said, we're only there on Tuesdays and Thursdays. We yes. have... Oh, excuse me <laughs> tuesdays and wednesdays wow i've got thursday on my mind it's july the 4th um but tuesdays and wednesdays we're there from nine to five denise and there have uh, and i've been there till nine o'clock a lot of times but neither here to say we are nine to five um and we have about six or seven uh computer workstations that that are going both days tuesday and wednesday so uh that's the kind of space we need we do keep minimal clothes for those that come to take a shower don't have a change of clothes and and like she mentioned we do have a little bit of food that we keep there so and hygiene products sure tents and sleeping bags we do have if 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 for some reason we can't get somebody in the motel we will give them a tent and a sleeping bag up to them to find a place to put this tent and sleeping bag but (laughs) sure yeah because i mean you know at this point this is about um I mean, I, I, it's fitting, you know, the THS, the Holy Spirit. I mean, it seems very Christ-like to look out for those who uh, who have been dealt a bad hand or who may just be struggling, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean, trying to offer them peace and solace. Yes. Um, so uh, at this home base, there would be a bit of everything to mm-hmm. assist these individuals. Mm-hmm. Well, yes. uh, uh, you know, are there uh, any other... Uh, extra special elements that would make a space even better you know is there anything else you know like a a basketball court or you know like uh, a pool or something i mean that would be great but but i mean since it's for the staff you guys are just looking for you know whatever you can find to uh, to assist folks we're a very bare bones organization about 97 percent of all of our donations come from the community and it goes straight back that goes or 100 percent comes from carrollton community but that goes straight back to our clients we since we're all volunteers we're a bare bare bones absolutely um do you have any statistics or information perhaps any numbers of the uh of in not to put you on the spot yeah. but any uh, numbers in regards to uh the amount of individuals that are served you know on average or or uh, perhaps specifically over the last few years uh, a few years or or per year so like this year we've done about 400 different individuals so far uh the staggering number to most people is the homeless children in our county the count in the city and the county there's 697 homeless people they may be couch surfing but 167 of those actually live in motels wow so yes that's a big number if you think about that and then like you know the seniors uh Last year, we had 65 seniors that were served last year. Wow. So, I mean, oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just going to say that another collaboration is with the county and city school system. Uh, of course, they have homeless liaisons that we work with very close there. I don't think people realize how big of an issue this is. No. Children, homeless children is a major thing. Wow. Children. I mean, I guess mm-hmm. I didn't even think about that. I mean, you know. We talk about, uh, you know, the seniors uh, in our local community. We talk about uh, folks that are struggling, but there are kids involved in this too. A lot of Absolutely. children. Absolutely, and they're the ones that hurt. Now they don't have a choice in it. They don't have a choice. Mm-hmm. I mean, you guys have seen a lot of, um, you guys have seen a lot of folks be assisted through the program. Um, would you like to share? Uh, you don't have to give any names, but uh, you know, uh, an example of of a success story. Folks coming out the other end and starting a new life. So we're, we've got a couple that we've worked with probably the last three years because it doesn't just take, you know, boom, you get a job and then you're on your own. 
they were they went from having a house having kids to losing the house losing the car losing the kids going to jail uh living in a tent and they are now working in a really great company that has helped them too along the way and they're now have their own place they have a job they're working on getting their kids back they've got visitation already they've done everything they needed to uh with like drug court uh defects it's just been an amazing situation to see how they've transformed they've joined a church they've married they've both been baptized we are so proud of this couple wow just a few years ago they were homeless oh absolutely <laughs> at, at bare bottom <laughs> imagine how grateful those children are going to be to to this organization and not just to the organization but to the folks that assist the organization including helping provide a new space for the office so that they can continue to serve the seniors the children those that are in need um this is very important work time is 8 51 we're going to go ahead and take our uh, second commercial break but when we come back we'll wrap up our conversation with denise swanson and laddie carter uh, from the ths homeless resource bridge officially known as ths emergency shelter inc uh, and uh, we'll talk about some uh, how other folks can how you can support the organization even if you don't have office space for them I'm sure there are other ways that you can assist the organization uh, with donations and volunteer hours and whatnot uh, so we're gonna be talking about all that and more uh, after a word from our sponsors Oak Mountain Academy and Tanner Hill system help is a journey it's making better choices even when it's not easy it's taking care of yourself and the people you love at Tanner Health System, we're there for you with every step, with primary care, heart care, cancer care, women's care, orthopedics, surgical services, and so much more. We're dedicated to helping you live and feel your best. So let's get on that journey to health. You've got places to be for many years to come. Find us at Tanner.org. The Entrepreneur Scholar Journey at Oak Mountain Academy is designed to provide students with a clearly defined curriculum-based track to acquire essential knowledge and skills for success in business and leadership. Critical areas include identifying entrepreneurial characteristics, selecting a value position, and business model development. I'm Patrick Uran, head of school, inviting you to journey with us on the mountain. For more information, visit us at oakmountain.us. Discover your journey at OMA. Prepare, explore, and achieve. Community Voice. Time is 8.53. Today is Wednesday, July 3rd. I'm your host, Josh Engel. We are continuing our conversation with Denise Swanson, CEO of THS Homeless Resource Bridge, as well as Laddie Carter, former CEO. Uh, she's got the history. She knows all about it. So if, uh, if, if you're just tuning in, be sure to check out the podcast of this episode or the live stream on our uh, News Talk 1330 Facebook page. Uh, we still got a little time in the program, so if you have any questions or comments, Feel free to throw those in the chat, and I'd be happy to read them to our guests. Uh, people don't realize how um, expensive it is to assist, uh, well, any nonprofit. If you're cleaning up the environment, uh, if you're helping uh, children who have been in abusive situations, if you're helping individuals who have been displaced, if they're homeless, it costs a lot of money. Uh, do you have any, you know, any grants or any uh, local corporate partners that step in and try to help what what you do with a, at a THS Homeless Resource Bridge? We do. Uh, two biggest grants that we write is from Community Foundations and then Carol EMC. And then most of our others are supplied by churches, individuals, corporations. We are truly blessed at here. Civic organizations. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, like uh, Sertoma and them, like Lions Club, we like just, that kind of stuff. We just went to Sertoma and received a check from them. I felt that. I yeah. could feel it. You transmitted it. Isn't that something? Yeah. Wow. So, so, I mean, there are organizations that have continue to step up and help make this good work possible uh, if it wasn't for them we wouldn't be here that's correct and uh you know we uh we were chatting about uh, during the break you know you guys are helping provide food helping provide clothing help provide a place to shower helping provide a home a place a space to be uh to to have dignity and to rebuild lives um you know be it that the name is ths which stands for the holy spirit I mean, do you offer, uh, through the organization, any spiritual guidance of any kind? 
Yes, just this year, uh, and we have over the years had uh, Bible studies on Facebook and that kind of thing. Um, but just this year, we added a volunteer who comes in every week and calls the clients we've helped the week before, prays with them, sees if there's anything that uh, you know that they need, and and it has been very welcomed by our clients. They often say. Uh, well, my friend's here. Will you pray with her also? And it, it's just been a great thing to add to our organization. So even people that are in the car with them, I mean, yeah. there's yes. how, how rare is it for someone to say, hey, you want me to pray with you? Yeah. You know, that that means a lot to these folks. I it mean, does. to have someone say, hey, I'm here for you, man. Like means the, a lot for somebody <laughs> to say, can I pray with you? Of course. <laughs> of course. So, uh, you know, I know we've we've hammered this point home, but I, I really want to hit home with listeners. This organization, uh, just this year, already assisted 400 individuals. We're talking about uh, seniors. We're talking about individuals uh, who have come out of uh, abusive relationships. We're talking about children, a lot of children, who are homeless and displaced. And, and we're thankful for the partners in the community that help uh, make this work possible. But you guys are in need of a home yourself. Uh, so uh, uh, just to reiterate, if you could, please let folks know what you're looking for. And maybe one of our listeners might know someone uh, you know, Carrollton, Carroll County strong, you know, we'll all, uh, or Harrelson County, wherever you're at listening right now. And if you think you could help, you know, uh, let folks know one more time what you're looking for. So it's about a, a piece of property that would be 1500 square feet with four or five type offices in it, sort of towards the city, because most of our people are around the city and they need services that are in the city that we work with. Uh, needs a shower would be nice, not necessary, but definitely a big plus for this. It would help serve the, the the client so much more to be able to have that option in case they need to come take a quick shower before they go to work. Right. Yeah, before work or after work. Sure. Definitely. We definitely would love to be within the, the city, uh, but we do serve the three-county area, Carroll, Harrell, Harrelson, and Heard counties. Perfect. All right. Well, uh, we're out of time now, so if you could let folks know where they can loan, learn more and where they can make donations or how they can reach y'all. So... THSshelter.com is our website. Our phone number is 470-729-2390. They can call or text us. Uh, Preferably text because we get so many calls we don't always answer. Sure. <laughs> because uh, we don't know who's calling, you know. But text is a, our email mm -hmm. at thsemergencyshelter at gmail.com. And they can reach out to you about making donations or donating materials, goods, mm -hmm. or possibly an office space. Amen. <laughs> Excellent. Yes. And well, help with the move. <laughs> absolutely. It'd be good if you can help with the move. That would be cool. Uh, well, uh, Denise Swanson, uh, Laddie Carter, uh, thank you both for the work that you do, trying to assist those in need in our local community. Uh, and thank you for coming on the program today. Thank you for having thank us, for and having thank you for the, for the community. Well, I appreciate that. We, we love the show. We love getting to spread the, the awareness. And uh, thank you to everyone who tuned in at home. We'll see you next time.